Well, just hours ago, the first U.S. commercial flight in more than 50 years touched down in Cuba. The JetBlue flight went from Fort Lauderdale to Santa Clara with plenty of journalists on board. The rules are relaxing by the day for Americans looking to travel to Cuba. That's right. Now, this month, the Department of Transportation approved frequent daily flights to Havana. And in June, Starwood became the first American company in decades to be able to operate a Cuban hotel. But there is a catch. It is still illegal for Americans to go to Cuba as tourists. So how did seven on your side consumer investigator Kimberly Suters get there? Yeah, she's a sneaky one. <laughs> she's here now to explain how she pulled this off. Kimberly? Uh, I did it all in the up and up, Leon. Local travel agents tell us Cuba is the fastest growing destination for American consumers. But to go, you have to fall under one of 12 categories. I went on what's called an educational people-to-people -people license with a tour group of 22 Americans and I recorded the entire experience on my iPhone. Antique American cars. Hemingway's home for 20 years. Havana just 90 miles from the U.S. Remember that the we, Cuba is more close to the United States than God. Mm -hmm. and it's, we, we need the embargo finished right now. An embargo the U.S. imposed 50-odd years ago as part of the Trading with the Enemy Act to isolate the Cuban government economically and deprive it of American dollars. But that U.S. law also deprives Americans from traveling freely. Walking through old Havana, you can hear tourist groups from all over the world. You hear languages in Spanish and German and French. In fact, two Spanish-speaking people came up and asked and said, wait a minute, I thought Americans weren't allowed to travel to Cuba. True before last year, when President Obama legalized travel to the island and more than 100,000 Americans poured in. Still an American riding in a bike taxi on a hot Havana night is considered novel. De Miami, Estados Unidos. And still the U.S. limits what we can do. If an American tourist wanted to skip the whole day and sit on the beach, can they do that? Can we do that? No, you can't. It's basically illegal for Americans to just go to the beach. So who would stop me from going out on this beach for five hours tomorrow? Well, um, certainly not me. <laughs> I did go to the beach briefly, but many more hours were spent like this. Here a designer turns her roof into a catwalk. Here people pick up their food rations. And here an artist dramatically transforms a neighborhood. U.S. rules require a, quote, full-time schedule of educational exchange activities intended to enhance contact with the Cuban people, even the tiniest Cubans. One university economist apologized we were required to listen to his lecture instead of enjoying a cocktail on the patio. He called our limited Cuba travel one hole in a Swiss cheese embargo that Cubans want to melt away. We are meant to be friends because we are quite close. You like our music, you like our art, we love your art. Why should we be enemies? We are meant to be friends. The friendship is not yet perfect. American credit cards don't work in Cuba. We can't take out more than $100 worth of alcohol and tobacco, about four high-quality cigars. And the most convenient way to comply with U.S. law is to pay three grand and up to U.S. tour companies. Then keep the itinerary for five years as proof that we learned about communist Cuba, but we didn't lounge around there. Here's the thing, it doesn't look like the U.S. is enforcing any of those restrictions. Seven on your side, ask the U.S. Treasury Department, which regulates the U.S. embargo on Cuba, how many Americans have been penalized for going to Cuba without the proper license or for sitting on a gorgeous beach like this one, like a tourist for hours. We looked through government records and in recent years and found American businesses are still being fined hundreds of thousands of dollars for breaking the rules, but not individual travelers. And Kim, one of the things you have to do is keep a diary with you. Right. 
you have to keep your itinerary, a diary. I have handwritten notes on mine because you have a stamp now from a communist country in your passport. And mm -hmm. U.S. Border Patrol might say, what were you doing there? You better have proof for five years. You have to keep this with your passport. Yeah, and uh, first of all, this whole trip for you is a nice advertisement for the iPhone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice stuff. I have to give it to we you. We shot the whole thing on but the iPhone. But the question I'm sure that a lot of people have is what does, what changes now with this flight that happened today? Today, everyone got to take a quick commercial flight like you would to Charlotte or to Miami or to New York. When I went in July, we had to go through a charter flight. You had to get at the airport four hours in advance on both ends. It's not as reliable. Now, people are going to be able to go back and forth very quickly. The only thing I will mention, though, that flight that went today, that historic flight, landed 150 miles away from Havana. Mm -hmm. There are lots of airports in Cuba. The Havana airport where I landed is tiny. I mean, it's about the size of our studio. Wow. So they have a lot of building to do with the influx of Americans that are going to come. Wow. Very interesting. I want you to go back a year from now because I want to see what you observe the change the changes. once this American influence gets in there because you know there's going to be tons of change. That's why we went now. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Beautiful stuff. You know we're jealous. That's you know a nice jealous. office. Yeah. For a week. I'll <laughs> I'm take telling that. You. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Kim. We'll see you. All right. Coming up here at 5. Just